Hey everybody, it's Jess from Madden Crafts and I am here at the AFCI Creativation Show in Phoenix. And today I am super excited to be in the plaid booth and sharing a new line of paint from Folk Art with you. And I think you're gonna be really excited when you see what it is. If you're not familiar with Creativation, I talked about it a little bit on my Facebook Live yesterday, but it is a huge trade show for craft manufacturers from around the world. So it's a huge trade show floor full of crafty goodies and all of the major brands in the world display their newest and best products that are coming out this year. So a lot of the things that I've been able to see this weekend aren't even in stores yet. And the new product that I get to tell you about today is gonna to be on store shelves very soon and you're gonna to wanna to get it, I know that you are. If you are unfamiliar with Plaid as a company, I bet you're actually not. Plaid makes Mod Podge, which everybody has crafted with sometime in their life. They are in charge of Bucilla and they also carry or manufacture the Folk Art line. And today I'm gonna to be talking to you about their new marbling paint. I think you've probably seen this somewhere on Facebook. Actually, yeah. let me know in the comments below if you have seen marbling or paint pour crafts on Facebook or on YouTube. They're a really big hit on social media because it's really satisfying to watch the paint marble. And so it's really great to see on video, but it's even more fun to play with in person. The Three reasons I think that marbling has been such a popular trend in the past year or two is first of all, it's so satisfying. If you're like me and you're not really a patient crafter, you want that instant gratification, this is gonna give you that because with a little bit of effort and barely any time, you're gonna have a beautiful result. You don't have to spend hours and hours counting cross stitch or uh, waiting for something to cure or harden. It happens right away. Second of all, it is something that anyone can do. In fact, with one of the methods I'm gonna show you today, you can go to the craft store, buy the paint, come home and immediately do the project. You don't need tools, you don't need any special skills, you can just, if you can dump paint on something, you can get some really beautiful results. So that's what I'm really excited about. The one thing that was a little bit of a problem with marbling in the past was getting the paint prepped for the project. Doing the marbling itself is super easy, but it took forever to get the paint to the right consistency. Some of us tried to DIY it by watering down regular acrylic paints, and that was a mess because either the pigments would clump up or the pigments would be so desaturated that you'd end up with kind of muddy, messy colors, and it was no good. And then we tried marbling medium, which works really well, but then you have to figure out how much mar marbling medium do you use for this much paint and you had to kind of mix and experiment and it took a lot of time. If you have any questions about this product or about what I'm doing at any point, just let me know and I'll try to answer them or find an expert around the booth who's able to give you the answers that you need. All right, so that was the issue with marbling in the past, but Folk Art has eliminated the only problem that people had with marbling products, and that is to create a paint that has the marbling medium built right in. So there's no mixing, there's no having to play mad scientist to get your levels right. You just take it right from the bottle onto your project and you're ready to go. So I'm gonna start a little bit right now and I will talk you through the process and if you have questions, please ask me and I'll try to answer. Um, as I go through what surfaces are available to work with with the marbling paint, why don't you guys um, pick one of these two color combinations and that's what we'll do the first pour. You can do a huge variety of surfaces. You can use it on paper to make gorgeous marbled paper for your scrapbooking projects or your cards. You can obviously use it on canvases to make wall art. You can use it on wood. You can use it on terracotta. You can use it even on ceramics, but you have to be a little bit careful with how you finish it on ceramics because that really smooth surface sometimes doesn't want to grab onto the paint as well as more porous surfaces do. So first off, I'm going to use this terracotta pot. What, what paint combinations seem to be showing up in the comments? Um, none yet. None yet? Okay. Well, I like the green red and, and blue. Green and blue. Okay, that's what we'll do. 
All right, so I'm gonna take these two paints and I'm gonna do what's called the direct pour method, which is about as easy as you can get for crafting. And two comments. Hi, Jess, you look amazing. And <laughs> from Debbie Freed and Katie Visaggio. Hello, ladies. <laughs> All right, so notice that before I get going on this project, I am not shaking the bottle. A lot of us crafters, we have that like instinctual wanting to shake the bottle up. Don't do that, because that gets bubbles into the paint and it won't pour as nicely. So for this direct pour method, let me make sure, yep, there's no seal on it. Literally, all you're going to do is take the bottle of paint and pour it right onto your project. So here I go, and this is the fun and satisfying part. You give it a good squeeze. Maybe there is a seal in there. Yep, it's stuck in there. Here, let's try it this way. Just give it a little bit of a squeeze right onto the surface. And do you see how beautifully that's flowing right down over the pot? It would have taken me probably a good 10, 12 minutes of mixing a marbling medium in to get it to be that perfect like viscosity, fluidity. And with this paint, it just, it comes that way right out of the bottle. So now I'm gonna go ahead and add a second color and you'll notice that the color drips and drags, but it doesn't get muddy. They don't mix together to make a new color. See how it's so satisfying to watch it drip. I just love it. And you get some really great organic shapes and patterns just by pouring paint onto your project. Again, if you guys have any questions or comments, just let me know and I'll do my best to answer them. The fun thing about doing marbling, along with the fact that it's so easy and so satisfying, is it's kind of liberating as a crafter. A lot of the times we feel constrained to do, you know, paint within the lines or try to control every aspect of the project and you're supposed to make a mess when you're marbling you are supposed to relinquish control and the paint is just going to do what it wants to do and you can see i'm getting some really great variations along this flower pot just by pouring a little bit of paint over the top of it Something like this is probably going to take a couple of hours, up to 24 hours to fully dry. And it, do your best not to mess with it while it's drying. Just leave it in one spot. And that way those ripples can kind of take form and solidify. And then once it's dry, for a project like this, you need to put some kind of sealant over it. And Plaid and Folk Art have some spray sealants and some varnishes that you can use to seal the paint in to really make sure that that doesn't ever lose those vibrant colors that, that they have in this line. And there are 10 colors in the line. I don't think I mentioned that earlier. Um, and I'm gonna show you a little bit later how you can even turn those 10 colors into many, many other colors. So that was a really fun project to do with a flower pot. I want to show you both another technique and another project that you can use. So I'm gonna try and move this over to the side without making a big mess here. That is what is, when you're doing uh, marbling, is called a direct pour, because you're directly pouring the paint right onto the project. Um, we have a question. Sure. Can you reuse what has dripped off your project? Um, I believe you probably could, but that's where you could end up with the colors mixing into each other. So you'll, you could end up with like a light green instead of a, uh, a medium green and a neon green. They could end up mixing together. I haven't really tried that. I think, it, I think it depends on how quickly you get to it and whether you're able to really like gather it together enough to pour it again. That might be something worth experimenting with though. All right, the next kind of marbling technique I want to share with you is called a dirty pour. There's kind of a fun name for it. And for that one, I'm gonna use a couple of different colors and I'm gonna pour them directly into a glass instead of onto the project. The neat thing about this paint, like I showed you before, when you do the marbling, the colors don't mix together. They sort of just coincide with one another, but you can, if you want to, mix a custom color. So if instead of the orange that you can buy in the store, you want a slightly different tone of orange, you can mix the colors together to create a new color, just like I'm doing here. So this is gonna be a really yellowy orange. Hopefully with the trade show lights, you can see what I'm doing here. 
So I've combined two colors to make a different color, not available necessarily in the line. Try not to make a mess here. But then I can add another paint right in there and if I don't stir it, I'm not gonna get a muddy mess with those colors. It's going to be as um, separated as I want it to. So when you're doing a dirty pour like this, hmm, let me see what other colors I should use here. Well, why not? We'll add some red in there. You add the different colors into a cup, just like this, and then you give them maybe one or two quick swirls. Not enough to stir them together, just to swirl them a bit. And then you have to do the flip technique, which I'm gonna do here. This is just a regular wood round. You place it on top of the cup, and then you do one, two, three, quick flip. And this is where the magic happens. You just release the cup, and that paint can slide all over your project. And again, this is where the paint's just doing what it wants to do. I'm not in control of this. I can sort of direct the color a little bit, but all of these colors are gonna take organic shapes, just the, however gravity wants it to work. And it's so much fun to do. Now here I've done this on a wood round. If you have raw wood like this, you might want to sand it before you start working, but you don't have to. And sometimes it's kind of good to have those natural surfaces because then the paint will try to move around them and you actually get more dynamic colors and shapes with your pour. So that is the really cool new Folk Art Marbling Paint that I believe will be in stores very soon. Am I correct in that? Uh, is it? Now. Yeah. Oh, it's available it's now. It's stores now. Perfect. And .com. So make sure you look for it in your local craft store. You can go to plaid.com and find out more about this paint and buy from there. Uh, and I will definitely be trying to get my hands on this and playing with it some more this year so you can get even more information on my blog, maddencrafts.com, or on my social media. I'm at maddencrafts all across the board. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.